Hello, everyone. Um, oh. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I'm here to tell you something about Perl 6 parsing in the real world. In particular, I'm going to talk about uh, two projects of mine that involve, uh, in Perl 6, that involve parsing. That is a tab parser and a YAML parser. Um, well, it all started with tab. Um, I happen to be the maintainer of tab harness in Pro 5, and um, I've never been very fond of the implementation. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a module that has a severe case of second system syndrome, and, and you know, factory factories and that sort of thing. Um, um, but also, the, it was never really intended to be a multiplexing program, and then it became one, and by by pure necessity. But it obviously never was meant to be, and it involves a number of hacks and a number of bugs that are very hard to fix. But because it's such an important module in, in Pro Five, I can't you know I can't easily decide I'm going to rewrite this from scratch because it's going to break things, and that's going to have there that, that's going to have a big Real life impact. However, I discovered I discovered at some point uh, at some point about a year ago, Pro Six didn't have a tab harness yet. So here I could do all the things I wanted to do, except you know it di it didn't have to work yet. I could you know slowly get there. Um, this is all this is all Jonathan's fault, really. <laughs> um, because in, uh, in Yapsi two years ago, we talked about all the, all the fancy async features in Pro 6, and I was like, hmm, that would have been really useful in a, in a program like a tab parser. Then I was like, yeah, maybe I can actually do that. Um, yeah. So what does it look like? Um, well, tab is a very, very simple data format. It, uh, the, the core of it is really two types of lines. One that starts with one dot dot and then another number, which is the number of tests, and the other is just OK lines. Um, in, a, in essence, anything that's not that is ignored. It's unknown data is ignored, just like you know HTML does. But this is a perfectly sensible thing to do in any data format, right? <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. Oh, it's very hard to write tap that's not valid. Basically, <laughs> it's worse. It's way, way worse. Like I said, anything that's unknown is ignored. It's valid. Um, so yeah. So what would the, does such a grammar look like? Um, in essence, uh, the, 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 the heart of the grammar is, the, the, is, is nothing more than a tab document is a bunch of lines, and then these are the different kinds of lines that I support. There are more than I just mentioned. Most of them are rather rare or, um, or can be safely ignored. Well, actually, pretty much all of them can be ignored except the plan and the OK lines if you really want to. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the tab is mostly, but not entirely, I'll get back to that later, mostly a line-based a line -based format which I'm heavily using here. Now you see, there's, there's these there's a, the possible lines are like a plan, or a test, or a bailout, or a version, or a command, and some other things, or an unknown. Now the tricky thing I... Da, 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 and here's easy an example of what, what a plan can look like. Um, it's a very fuzzy format, which kind of leads to longer rules than I would like. You could make a very simpler tab that is much easier to parse by small things like, like, like this. there has to be a space here, and, and this dash has to be here. They're, no, they're both not optional. Um, but what I'm doing here is any of these is possible, which is like the single bar, and then if none of them match, then we use the double bar to say, all right, in that case, it's an unknown. Because the unknown is defined as anything, any characters that are not a new line ended with a new line. So that way, almost anything is valid, except when it's really not. 
Um, and, the, and the second step after this, after this, are the actions. Um, so the the, the, um, the tab grammar produ produces. Uh, this is used together with the tab grammar to essentially produce an, an abstract syntax tree. In this case, we have um, in the plan line we save the, the the number of of the number of tests and and the other data, and then here we here we gather it and we stuff it into an object, which is then later on used by the other parts of the parser. Um, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask. I'm assuming not everyone here is is very familiar with Perl six. Um, and basically, the objects it's creating are very simple. They're just containing the data that you've just parsed. So, in case of a plan, it's just a number of tests. If data should all tests be skipped, and if so, it we'll gives an explanation of why should these be skipped. Um, yeah. But the, the parser is, is where it starts, is the other part that starts to be interesting. Because, they, as I said, to do a proper parallel. Uh, parser, I have you have to do an asynchronous parser. So what I'm doing is, I get data, I try to match as much of it as possible, um, and when I get results, I pass those on, and when not, I keep them in the buffer, and I'll add data, data again later and later, and then in the end, everything has to be parsed within the intermediate states. I'm just parsing whatever I already have. <coughs> Um, these, these, all these objects for like the plan and the tests are then uh, gathered in a state object that doesn't really do more than, hmm, I haven't seen a plan yet, so yeah, this is okay, or this is the second plan in this tab document, um, maybe I shouldn't be accepting this. Um, I think it should be clear to have people who haven't written till six, or... Um, and then I, and, the, um, and then I got, I, I, what? and then I gather these together at the, by first creating like an asynchronous process that has the, as output has the tap, then I attach the standard outputs to the tap parser and, and, and basically that's it. Then I, then I'm. Did that all, all of that is enough to be asynchronously parsing the tab. And as the final step of that, um, in the harness itself, all, all I'm, and this is essentially this code is stolen straight from Jonathan's presentation two years ago. It's it's it's. Well, except for the few lines that actually does the, the tap thing, but, but the entire structure of this, this is a very typical, um, I guess, for like Pro, si Pro 6, async, whatever, parsing. Um, I'm plotting a number of jobs, and I'm keeping the, the number of jobs at a certain level, and then when, when there's a result, I, pass, I start a new job, and, um, uh, until, I'm done with, until, until I'm done with all of them. Um, and in essence, these are all the moving parts. And I mean, I've, I mean, I've, I've skipped a lot of the specific cases for, like, this is in case for a, for a test, this is in case for a YAM or whatever. But in essence, these are all the moving parts that are involved in writing an, as an asynchronous parser, like a parallel asynchronous parser like this, which to me is very little moving parts considering the complexity of the subject. Uh, the the tap, tap harness in Pro 5 certainly has a lot more moving parts and isn't working as well as, as this is as as, the, as this is working when it, when it comes to like proper parallelization. Um, yes, unfortunately um, unfortunately real life is not this simple. Um, because I may, I kind of like when I said tap is line-based format. 
It, it originally was designed to be, but it, ha it, 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 it hasn't been for years because nowadays we have subtests. Does anyone here use subtests when they're... Okay, I'm going to tell you a very awkward truth. You see, the, the line after the indented part is the conclusion line. Tap harness in Pro 5 is only reading that one and ignoring all the, and all, ignoring all the indented lines. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, part of part of this exercise was also like I want to write a truly correct tab parser that actually does parse the subtests the way they're intended to be parsed, instead of tab is the subtests were deliberately designed that if you ignore them, then you still get a correct result. It was just was not entirely expected that we would be ignoring them for more than half a decade and <laughs> um, it doesn't really help that the, syn the, the, the syntax is not optimally parsable to be honest. It would be way easier if there was a clear start marker and but well this is what we what this is what we've got so we'll have to do. Um, yes and this is also the subtests are they're fairly complicated to parse, to be honest. I mean, I, it, I figured it out, but, but, but there's more complication in it than I would like. I mean, tap is supposed to be simple, and this, this kind of isn't. But there's more. There's this other thing in, in, in tap that's even more complicated than subtext, of course, which is YAML-ish. A subset, a subset of YAML, and of course I wanted to parse that too because because I want to write the best that parser, right? Um, YAML is YAML is a good deal more complicated than than tab to parse. Um, even even if you only want to try to parse a subset, and and I had some feature writers in this project. But even if you're parsing a subset, a subset, um, oh, um, the thing is, this is like subtests. YAML is a mostly indentation-based um, format, except when it isn't. <laughs> There's this. I mean, uh, well, most of many of you will know Ingi. He's one of the three designers of YAML, and basically. Hmm? Well, there you go. Um, basically, they were not very good at, at rejecting features, which is, which is why there are, I think, five different ways to express a string. Um, and there are, most things only have two different ways to express them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, what can possibly go wrong? Well, the grammar I currently have is about 700 lines, though my tap grammar is only is 100. And 700 lines is enough for about 80% of YAML. But I wouldn't be surprised if the thing ends up being closer to 1,000, if I ever manage to make it like a full conformant parser. Well, it's probably going to be an almost conformant parser. YAML stack is... Um, Longer than the XML spec. Um, yeah. Well, in essence, the, the, the interface of it is fairly simple, as as and similar to like YAML implementations in other languages. There's a function. You give it a string, and it, and it output and it output something else, like like a hash or an array or a string. Because why wouldn't a string be a valid YAML? Uh, YAML, right? Um, Yes, YAML was um, the mump, what? The, the, um, much of it is really like there's a spec. It's barely readable, but there's a spec. And then you implement it, and it's full of this. Um, it's not even that it's very complicated. There's just option one, option two, option three, but it works. Um, Yes, of the, the 
Uh, in, in this grammar, um, there, there, there are different kinds of there are different kinds of rules in process. There's 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 regex, there's rule, and there's token. Um, and I'm mainly using token, which has these really nice for me. This is a really nice feature that it doesn't do backtracking within the token, which, um, when you can afford to do it that way, leads to much, much faster failing to part in particular. Um, so in this case, it's like a document. It may or may it, um, it may or may not be a header, but that would be the token before this, and then it's a map or a list or an inline value, or a block string, or a plain string. Um, 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 and uh, most of these aren't even the rules that, um, for example, on map, I assume, I assume most of you are vaguely familiar with the, the YAML format. Um, in essence, a map is just a key, a colon, and a value. And a map is nothing more than a bunch of these separated by new lines. And the appropriate indents, because YAML is an indentation oriented format. Um, um, and YAML being YAML, uh, a key can be uh, can be a, a subset of plain values, not like unquoted, but not all, not all values that would be valid elsewhere, or a single quoted string, or a double quoted string, mostly. <laughs> um, um, yes, and uh, I should have added the second example. Um, And essentially, ele elements again can be a block value with a certain indent, or an inline value, or a plain value. Um, I should have. Um, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, this is um, this is one of those things where um, it gets really interesting. The block values. Now, why am I saying this? Um, basically, when I showed this to Indy, he was like, "You wrote a gra an actual working grammar for YAML." Um, because basically, I had no idea when I started this, but apparently, no one had done this before, even Ingi. <laughs> um, and the main reason for this is that most grammar engines aren't powerful enough to um, actually deal with all these edge cases. And this is a good example where I'm actually cheating by putting a tiny bit of full code inside of the grammar that basically does some pre that does some analysis on what's what what's coming next, and they can can then can then it can feed back to the grammar engine. Well. Actually, you need to par you need to parse this kind of white space and not the other one because that would be wrong. Yeah. Um, hmm? <laughs> it definitely isn't. Um, and you, it would not be possible to parse a format like like YAML if 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 you would use a grammar engine that's designed for a context free lang context free uh, grammar because it just isn't. And this is one of the things that I really, that was really like, like an eye-opener for me. It can actually do these very ugly, but very powerful things. Um, yeah. um, of course not everything is, is uh, a token, because, because, this is YAML. 
And because in YAML there's not only the, 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 the there are not only the block formats for um, for hashes and lists as you probably know them, but also JSON is just as valid. And JSON is is an entirely different kind of free flowing format that to, J to JSON like stuff white space is irrelevant. To YAML it isn't. It's, um, and when these two meet, interesting things happen. Um, there are still a few bugs here left. Um, can anyone of you, by the way, guess what happens if you do um, square open bracket, full colon space bar, square closing bracket? It's an array of a map, yes. Because why wouldn't you put a block format inside of a flow format? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, um, I'm not quite parsing that one correctly either, because why, Ingi, why? Um, yeah, um, but I'm, I'm still not quite 100% there where I want to be. And one of the things that I really learned when writing this grammar is that um, I've written this the same way that like the tap, I wrote the tap grammar and the same way that like the, the JSON tiny grammar is written, which is very much a single face parsing. And then process is really good at, at using, using one face to really like go from strings to actually usable, uh, usable AST. Um, it turns out that, guess what, YAML is a little too, a little too flexible to, to actually do that properly. Um, because um, basically it has these tags and namespaces that are not entirely dissimilar to XML namespaces. The, the, it doesn't really have very well defined rules on which values should be the this should be interpreted as as a boolean or a number or there are different schemas within YAML that have different levels of you know what they allow and not um, and it turns out that implementing this in a single phase parse is not really flying so one of the things I really want to do in the future is, is having like a more a more, a more abstract ASC and then convert that to the eventual value. Because currently I'm going from, from I'm not really producing an actual ASC, I'm producing the, the straight lists and maps and strings, etc. Um, so that's my next project, that's my, the next phase in this project, like having a, having a real ASC. Hmm? <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, these are the, 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 these are the, like I said, the, 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 there are various different tags and, and implementing that inside of the um, grammar is just is awful. Also that would prevent a lot of the code that's currently like, like I have a lot of rules like this for like, for legal values are an integer and a hack hexadecimal integer which is valid in some schemas and not in others and uh, that's kind of true for half of these values and I really want to move to, to like YAML parser where you can actually choose I want YAML with this schema and then these values are valid and these values are this is all a consequence of everything is a plane if it's not something else and a, bit similar, a bit similar to tap if I'm ever writing like a format, I'm definitely going to make it very, very strict. Um, so yeah, that's all. Any questions? <laughs> this ex this. <laughs> yes, that does explain a lot, yes. It doesn't explain five formats for strings, but... <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I can't hear you. Probably, yes, but it's like there's this block format for strings, for example, and then there's different variations on what do you want to do with like the white space, um, like in, at the edges, and then there's a second option that I've never seen anyone use, but it's in the spec to say, no, you would auto-detect this level of indentation, but actually it's this other level of indentation, so you should use that instead. Oh, yeah, I was, bit, I, was, I was a bit quick, I maybe went a bit quick on that. Um, yeah. Um, yes, the difference between the single bar is that the single bar is use, using longest token parsing. So it's basically, it's basically trying all of them at the same time and picks the best of them. Right. <laughs> yes. And basically, the, the second, the double bar is only used when, when the left side fails entirely, then the right side is attempted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure if, you know, I would, I don't know the module very deeply, but given, I have an idea of what's involved, like, underneath. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if I would use that, like, 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 for, um, um, in 5.10, Pro 5 gained a lot of uh, grammar uh, regex features that are really powerful but rarely used. Also because it's very powerful, but the syntax is 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 kind of terrible. <laughs> um, and basically, what he did is 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 sort of preprocessor to give that a more sensible syntax, which is a good idea. But the whole concept of essentially transpiling from one grammar syntax to another. Um, yes. Um, yes, I think it would be, um, there was this very, uh, basically the, the, the the biggest bug fix like that was ever funded by the Pro 5 maintenance fund was uh, based a bug fix that made um, local do interesting things in code blocks in regular expressions. And I, I suspect that, I forgot which version this was fixed. Um, this was literally like more than 100 paid hours to fix this. And I'm very grateful that happened because that is the only reason why I think that might be possible. Why? <laughs> the, um, it might be possible. It might not. I've never. I tried something like that, and I, in a simpler case, and I didn't get it to work. But but it it might actually be possible, but it's not going to be sane. And this. This grammar is, once you're used to grammars, but, um, they're fairly complicated, but also fairly sane. And this is a kind of grammar where I'm like, I can actually still understand what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, no, I haven't. Um, I'm currently not expecting it to be faster, but that's also because and
Yes. <laughs> well, actually, on, 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 on Windows, it actually will try to, like, it will, it will start eight jobs and then, and wait, then wait for them serially. It, it, yeah. And that's one of those things where I'm like, you can't really fix that in the implementation without basically rewriting more than half the implementation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, any more questions? Um, um, no, it means, um, wait, where was the example with the, um, uh, uh, inline maps? Or the, the, that's a good question. Uh, oh, there. Yes, um, a percentage means basically I have multiple pairs, uh, well, zero or more pairs, and they're separated by a comma. Um, and the percent percent, this is actually one thing that, like, the JSON, uh, the JAML syntax allows that, that uh, JSON doesn't, means it's allowed to have an extra comma at the end. That's the difference between single and double percent. Um, but this is... One of those really nice things, um, it's, I can't really think of a more simple way to express this general concept. It's, it's one of those places where grammars really work out. But yeah, this is, they separated by commas. <laughs> <laughs>